But long story short, I feel like I've been through many lives as a youngster right now, you know. And now I'm I'm um, putting this album together and, and I'm meeting you. And I love what you're doing, man. I love, I, I heard your, your station out when I was in Nashville. We, oh, we got wow, a good <laughs> Well, good to talk to you, man. I'm, I watch the Colbert Show almost every night, and I see you on on TV. And, and I, I don't know a lot about you. I, I did some research, and you're from Louisiana, and you've got some great roots, a musical family. Want to tell us about uh, all your brothers and so on that play music? Well, I, I have a, a, a musical family that I'm from, and now it's been basically working on music since I was a child. And I moved to New York when I was 16, 17 years old, around then, to go to Juilliard and started my band, Stay Human, which you see on The Late Show every night. When I was at Juilliard, it was crazy because you're going from this small town. You know, I'm from Kenner, Louisiana, and then you get to New York City. And um, the process of becoming from that point until now has really been an artistic journey. That's that's what's... Um, which was very special about where I am now is that I feel like I've lived three or four lives. You know, there was New Orleans, then there was 17 and I was touring around the world and I was playing with different people. I got to play with my mentors, you know, like Prince. I played with Prince for a while. Um, went in Marsalis, Lenny Kravitz, some of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I played, you know, just around these different styles of music. And then I formed my band. So the long story short, I feel like I've been through many lives as a youngster right now, you know, and now I'm, I'm um, putting this album together and, and I'm meeting you. And I love what you're doing, man. I love, I, I heard your, your station out when I was in Nashville. We oh, got wow, a good cool. vibe. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. So I know a little bit about you too, man. Um, it's, it's, I was reading about your, um, who you played with and you played with Ed Sheeran and you played with Gary Clark Jr. and Leon Bridges and, these are all people that I've like hung out with and it makes me feel like I've kind of connected with you, even though I have not met you before. Well, you know, I feel that, I feel that with you too, anybody who's in this business trying to put the real deal out there is, is, you know, we connected. I just have a day job that keeps me in New York for 202 days a year. But, uh, <laughs> I see a lot of people on TV. We keep up with each other that way. But, um, Gary and, and Leon are, are, are friends of mine. who we, we did some recording together. I have a lot of friends who I don't see because I'm so busy. You know, when I when I made this record, we had to, we set up a dressing room recording studio. And in between me doing the, the Late Show, obviously, uh, um, I was doing the score and consulting for Soul. And then I was also writing a musical and then at the end of the process, I was protesting in the streets um, in the middle of the pandemic. But I did all of that kind of stuff at the same time as making this album. So I just kind of feel like the last year, I haven't had time to really be in a space with anything but the art and whoever I'm creating the art with, you know? You are one of the few artists that I've seen actively participate in protesting against things that are just wrong. And I really appreciate you for doing that. Um, what, what made you want to do that? I think it's a gift from God to be able to create and share with people and change their spiritual nature from a sound, from that, that exchange that happens from music is so genuine. And I think that, you know, as, as um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, that the musician changes and takes the things of the nature and changes them into sound and makes order out of things when there's disorder. And that idea is something that really resonated with me. I, I think that I wanna be somebody who creates um, this sort of divine order with my music. And I've been doing these things since I moved to New York when I was a kid. I still feel like that same kid. I, I you know, I'm 33 now, but I still feel like this 16, 17 year old kid in New York, what, where, where we, um, we would go in the middle of the street and I'm not even sure how the first one started. It just, people would gather, right? And uh, you see, oh man, somebody was at the ice cream stand. They'll come over and they would stand around us while we were playing. And then uh, over 15 minutes or so, it'd be like 200 people, kind of a little small crowd, like a little small club. Then after a while, 
we would start marching like a procession. We start marching and playing, and I'm playing my horn, and um, because I can't take piano out in the middle of the street, I didn't have the budget back then. <laughs> but so I'm playing my horn, and then I'm, I'm I'm moving through, and people are following us, and we started calling these kind of spontaneous processionals love riots because they would feel like a riot, and the police would inevitably come and stop it because they would see. 500 people marching in the middle of the street chanting and they would think what is this what's happening but then they'll come in the middle of it it's just a bunch of people who don't know each other singing and dancing together is um, that almost like a new orleans funeral it is it is it's like a it's like a new orleans funeral or a uh, second line parade but we would be playing all kinds of music we'd be playing music from you know tchaikovsky to kendrick lamar and it would be all of the range of sounds. So you get people hearing the song like, I know that sound. Oh, I know that song. Oh, let's dance, let's get it. And they get together and it just would create such a vibe that, you know, we started doing those at our live shows and jumping off the stage of the encore, taking the audience out of the venue. But long story short, when I saw the uprising and the political unrest, the Love Riot was made for all times. Um, that concept of, of Getting, them, getting people together and creating love, joy, and community anywhere that we go is something that can be applied to dark times and it can be applied to times of great celebration. And that's what we did. Tell me about your new record. Did you uh, do it like on weekends when you're not on the Colbert show or what did you do? We really did the record. If we did the record in my dressing room the blueprint of it was laid in six days in my dressing room in between scoring the film and, and doing the late show. I would come in and I had creatives coming into the dressing room, friends of mine who are creative geniuses, just I love to work with. And they would stay in and work and I would come in and out around the clock for six days. We made the blueprint. Then over nine months, I would travel and I would paint and I would do all kinds of different things to kind of, you know, um, build on that blueprint. And then the house was built in nine months and the, it, we finished it smack dab in the middle of that pandemic and the, the pro protest and the activism that I was doing. So I would go back and forth from, you know, protesting in the middle of the street, leading 10,000 people from Union Square to like the the, the, the Empire State. You know, we, we, we gone all through the Empire State. Then I go back to my little room, my little studio by myself, quarantining for 14 days, putting the finishing touches on the record. So it was just like going back and forth between all of this stimulus is my kind of creative way. I really like that. So how did you get hooked up with the Colbert show? I, I was not familiar with you up until a couple of years ago until I saw you on the show and I watch every night. So you're- Yes, yes. I did the show. Um, I started doing the show in 2015 after being a guest on his old show, The Colbert Report. We were on The Colbert Report at the time. I was putting out independent music um, and we put out this album called Social Music. And it was the number one album on Billboard and we had a, a, a long run in, in the jazz charts. And um, we got invited on the show to do a love riot. And we did a love riot on The Colbert Report. We actually took the studio audience out of the venue and we did a processional love riot. And I got the interview with Steven. So he was in character, but as you know, that, that show, he was in character for the whole season. But we kind of clicked in the interview, became a, a um, there was a chemistry that, that became what you see today. So uh, that was the, the first time we met was on his old show. And, and from then, um, I was on that show again. And then after that, I, I continued to um, keep in touch with him and we were, we were working together on the new show, and it's been six years since then. So, you know, now a lot of people have, have uh, seen the show, obviously, but that was the beginning stages. How do you film uh, the band when you're all in different places? Well, the band is uh, similar to studio sessions, recording sessions. You know, you send the files, and once you send the files, you really have to just simulate what it's like being in the same place. You know, people have been doing it in um, rap music for, for years. You know, it's just a way that non-live based 
music is made. We just have to simulate what it feels like to be live. And that just takes a really clever and um, skilled musician. You gotta just find a way to make it happen, you know. You seem to be a sneaker guy. How many pairs of shoes do you have? Oh, I love shoes, man. Shoes, Over I, I don't even know. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> I I, uh, I keep shoes in different parts of the uh, different parts of the house, and then I have shoes in my dressing room, and I have shoes in my office. You know, I I, I try. What I'm doing now is actually I'm simplifying. Over the holidays, I gave a lot of stuff away. And I want to get to the point where I have three pairs of shoes. And then, of course, I have show shoes that match for, for, outf for outfits that I wear either on television or if I'm doing a performance or something like that. But I do want a little bit. We don't need that much. True, true. I, uh, I always enjoy seeing your costumes and your outfits because you are a very stylish guy. Thank you. Yes, indeed. I love I love style. Style is a, a manifestation of a lot of beauty that is within. You put it on the outside. Well, tell me a little bit about your new record. Uh, did you have any guests on it or just your band? It was a, a mix of, um, uh, of, of different ensembles. You know, I had my, um, my father play bass on it, my grandfather on it i had a lot of great drummers steve jordan um played drums on it also uh james gadson played drums on it uh nate smith played drums on it um big guest uh maybe staples quincy jones oh i love her i love Mavis. jd smith yep yep Mavis is, is is a great mentor of mine um she's on the record um pj morton trombone shorty Oh, Emily I, love King. I saw you went to school with Trombone Shorty. Yep, yep. Went to school with Trombone Shorty, New Orleans brother. Um, PJ as well, uh, St. Aug. And, and then we had a great, great lineup of um, collaborative producers, Ricky Reed, Homo, John Sweet. Just so many different people. Autumn Road, my songwriting partner. Wow. Like almost 100 people worked on this record. We had wow. an orchestra, we had the choir. Uh, like I said, I built the record over nine months. Russell Vado mixed Manny American. So many, Robert Randolph played on a lot oh, of stuff. Oh, I love Robert. That's my boy, yeah. man. Robert Randolph, wow. I mean, the Hot 8 Brass Band. Literally a hundred people probably worked on this record. The record is really a, um, it's, it's, it's not really any specific genre or any specific um, feel other than the feel of, of community and the feel of just kind of this, it's a very conscious record. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to share with people. I think people when, when, you were, when you were a kid, did you always want to be a musician or is this something that just like happened because it was your family thing? It was just kind of you're born into it? You know, I wasn't really uh, trying to be a musician until I was one. <laughs> it chooses you. It was something that happened to me. I didn't choose it. You know, I'm I'm always I'm I'm always interested in, in a lot of different things at one time. Like I was making this record and doing a lot of things at once. I've always been like that. I always wanted to um, focus on specific aspects of this, specific aspects of that, specific aspects of this and put them together. And when you do that in music, it's a very, very rewarding experience. And I think that's what pulled me to music, but I'm still someone with many different interests. You know, I could see myself, you know, who knows in 10 years, if I'm blessed to still be, be doing my thing, what it'll look like or what I'll be doing. One thing I miss right now is going to see live music because I, I usually went to shows three or four nights a week and I've probably been to three or four shows since March. It makes me very sad. Mm, yeah, I know what you mean. I think when we come back, it's going to be a real release, real special time. Well, I'm looking forward to your new record coming out and uh, it comes out in, in March, right? Yes, indeed. March 19th. We're going to be oh. out there. 
And uh, tell me the name of that record again. We Are. We Are. Okay. Yes, indeed. I'm so happy to have talked to you today, and I'll see you tonight on TV. You won't see me, but I'll, I'll be watching you, man. <laughs> hey, man. Well, I feel you. I feel your spirit. Man, we're going to be in it. When you come to Nashville, I would love to see you. Yes, yes. I, I um, shout out to my folks over at Nashville Symphony Hall. We had a great time over there. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to come back. And uh, we got to meet in person, my brother. We're going to get it in. <laughs> All right. Well, peace out, man. Thank you so much. Later on. Have a good All right. one. All right. Bye-bye.